Hi guys, welcome to Classic Sitcoms Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today's video is by request. It was a little while, a little while ago since I requested it, and I have done one before, but I wanted to do another one. Uh, and with the request, I'm do it now. So uh, this one is on Sanford and Son. Uh, it's mostly about Red Fox, but it is on Sanford and Son. And if you don't know my co-host, it's Mr. Rooster out there. So, uh, let's take a look and um, see what's up with your favorite junk man. Red Fox wasn't his real name. Fox was born John Elroy, Elroy Sanford in St. Louis on December 9, 1922. Spent his early teens on the Chicago South Side, moved to New York in the 40s, and began hanging out with a man who had become known as Malcolm X. It was Malcolm who dubbed, dubbed the young comic Chicago Red because of his reddish hair. Others called him Foxy, so Sanford combined both for the stage name Red Fox. A quarter century later, the Sanford and Son character would be named after his father and brother, Fred G. Sanford. He was a comedy pioneer. Fox's big break came when he and comic Slappy White, a future Sanford and Son guest star, opened for blues singer Dinah Washington in the early 50s. Soon after his raunchy solo act became a fixture in African-American clubs and on explicit party records, Fox released the first authentic recordings taken from the nightclub stage. Cliff Nesteroff wrote in the comedian's Drunk, Steve, Scoundrels, and the History of American Comedy. Uh, by the early 1960s, everyone was in the game. Comedy records were a national phenomenon. Fox crossed over to mainstream success in 1966. Uh, he played uh, the Atlantan Hotel, becoming the first African-American comic to headline Las Vegas. He used the proceeds to open the Red Fox Club in L.A., where he inspired up-and-coming comics of color like Richard Pryor. And Pryor would later uh, write two episodes of Sanford and Son. He was the epitome, Mr. Roth quotes Pryor saying, he was doing it all, being himself on stage, pulling no punches, a total no BS act. Fox cleaned up for TV. His first exposure to TV audiences came to talk variety program like The Tonight Show, Joey Bishop, and Flip Wilson Show. In these venues, the comic proved he could be clean enough for TV, but still be himself. When Norman Lear and his tandem productions partnered Bud York and decided to capitalize on the success of All in the Family, with a similar series about an African-American family, they immediately wanted Fox. When York and asked composer Quincy Jones to compose the scene, Jones asked who would be the star. Man, you can't put Red Fox on national TV, Jones said. Lear and York had proved him wrong. Uh, Sanford and Son was based on a British sitcom, as they had done with All in the Family. Lear and, or uh, Lear and York and based Sanford and Son on a British sitcom. Ray Galton and Al Simpson's Steptoe and Son. Uh, it was a BBC situation comedy about a rag and bone dealers, uh, Albert and Harold Steptoe. The elder Steptoe, the template for Fred Sanford, was played by Irish actor Wilford Brambell, otherwise best known as Paul McCartney's grandfather in Hard Day's Night. Fox received an Emmy nomination after just three months on the air. Uh, Sanford and Son was an immediate hit when it debuted at the mid-season replacement in January of 1972. The series concluded its first season in April, ranked sixth in total viewers. Fox received his first Emmy nomination for Best Actor in a Comedy Series, Ironically, losing to Carol O'Connor for All in the Family. He would be nominated twice more, both, losing both times. Fox missed nine episodes in a contract dispute. Fox walked off the series during the season three, citing health issues. Scripts were rewritten, and Whitman Mayo's Grady took over the lead for the final six episodes. Fox saw the 25% ownership stakes in the series, and Tandem Productions fought back with a $10 million lawsuit. The dispute was solved in June of 74, with Fox receiving $25,000 per episode, plus 25% of the producer's net profits. Although Fox was still absent from production of the first three uh, shows of the season, four, uh, NBC aired his return as the series season premiere. Fox and Wilson quit the show. After season six ended in March of 77, Fox attempted an offer from ABC, accepted an offer from ABC, to host a variety show and quit Sanford and Son. Despite the new show's pedigree, it was created by Sonny and Cher and some other brothers veterans, Alan Blyle and Bob Einstein. Uh, the Red Fox Comedy Hour was canceled after just a month. 
When NBC rejected uh, Damon Wilson's request for a raise to continue without Fox, he too decided to leave, taking the lead in CBS sitcom Baby I'm Back. That show was also short-lived, surviving only 13 episodes. NBC tried to continue Sanford and Son without Sanford or Son. Faced with the prospect of losing one of the biggest hits, NBC decided to keep going without either of the leads. They retooled Sanford Arms, premiered on September 16, 1977 with Theodore Wilson uh, from That's My Mama and Good Times, uh, running the next door uh, rooming house the Sanfords had bought earlier in the series. Most of the supporting cast remained, but the audience didn't buy it. Ratings plummeted and the show was canceled after four episodes. Red Fox returned to spread Sanford. Less than three years later, Fox returned to NBC for a sequel series, Sanford. Damon Wilson chose not to participate, and comic actor Dennis Berkeley uh, was cast as Fred's new partner, Cal Petty. Uh, the series did not match the success of the original and was canceled after two short seasons. Uh, the signature gag on Sanford and Son involved Fred faking a heart attack, clutching his chest and uh, proclaiming, I'm coming, Elizabeth, to his deceased wife. But on October 11, 1991, while working on his comeback series, The Royal Family, Fox suffered a heart attack. The cast members initially thought he was kidding, but Red Fox died later that night at the hospital. Ironically, the working title for the series had been Chest Pains. It was a sad end for a brilliant performer whose life and art were effectively linked. Uh, one of the greatest uh, sitcoms ever. Uh, just, it, I, I did not know that it, I, and I'm, call me dense if you will, I did not know that uh, Norman Lear was uh, the creator of this. I didn't know. Um, now I do. I want to apologize for yesterday because uh, of how there was, uh, boy, the rooster's really gone. Uh, because there was no um, interest theme, exit theme, epilogue, or anything. Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, it's my fault, and I apologize for it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and Mr. Rooster. And um, please, if you're music fans, go check out Classic Rock and Country uh, Music Facts and Trivia. Link is in the description below. If you can't find it, it's okay. Hit me up in the comment section and I'll just give it to you. Uh, and once you're over there and you check it out and like what you see, because I know you will, after all, I did it, um, subscribe. Appreciate it. And share it out if you would. And don't forget to subscribe here and share these out. And give us a thumbs up and stuff like that. Have a great day. God bless you. I'll be praying for you.